Hi, uh, this is Stan Miller and we're going to continue some of our lessons. Today we're going to talk about choosing a paintable subject based on your skill level. Uh, here's my studio right here. I'm holding this camera but you can see my uh, we're going to work right there. There's my studio and nice sunny day in Spokane so let's get started. Okay, we're going to talk about uh, Making uh, finding subjects that are easy to paint when we're first learning how to paint. I'm gonna we're gonna use watercolor. Uh, the first thing I encourage my students to do when they paint is first learn to paint something the way it looks. So if I do this, I ask my students, "Can you do that?" And this is imitating it. So they learn to paint what they see. So that is the same as that. If I do this and I ask a student to paint that, and they do this that is not the same as that. Sounds kind of uh, like a silly thing to address but it's amazing how many people if I if I draw a line like that and the student draws a line like that I say uh, can you show me that you can paint what I see? That's what I recommend first. First let's learn how to paint what we see as Mark Twain said first learn the truth then distort it to your heart's content. So the first lesson is let's learn how to paint things the way they look first and then later when we get learn how to do that we can start interpreting, we can start changing and distorting, okay? Another analogy here was, is uh, in terms of going out and selecting subject matter for those of you who have uh, who have played an instrument before the fewer the notes the easier the piano music is to play the more notes we have, uh, the more difficult it gets. So when we go into painting, again, a black square, like I just showed you here, this is very easy to paint. Uh, trying to copy that is much more difficult. So when we go into subject matter, one of my first handouts is, I have the students, actually I have them trace this because most of my beginners don't know how to draw so I, I actually make them trace things so they can learn the technique and then later I try to teach them how to draw because it can take a long time to learn how to draw but everybody can learn how to draw. They trace this, then I have a handout and it shows them step at a time. So they start out first they make the background dark, that's step one. Step two, they start putting in the, the uh, subtle values. Step three, they have dark, medium, and light values. And step four, they do the whole painting. And uh, then we move to like a goose. This is a handout I have here. And it's a very simple subject. Again, they trace the uh, pattern. They learn to get a dark. They save their lights. Then they, they paint the medium value and uh, they're off and running. And I demonstrated, so here's the demonstration I did of the goose. Uh, so uh, we tape the edges, we do the background, we save the whites, and they're just using a one inch flat brush, so this should go pretty easy for them. Then when we move to the portrait, uh, uh, this is a fairly paintable portrait. Even people have never don't know how to draw. I make them trace this, uh, put this actually behind their watercolor paper. I use 140 pound arches, they trace it and then they using a one inch flat brush like this here they and they paint around the background and this just has dark and light so this is pretty easy. Now if they tried to move to this too soon, this is the same person in color so I teach my students how to simplify their photographs and that same photograph or that same person, different angle, is made like that. We use Photoshop or uh, photo tools to, to make a much more difficult subject, make it easier to paint. Same thing here, this subject here, uh, if we look at the color version of that, here is the uh, here's the color version. This is much more difficult to paint than if we turn it into black and white and we make it much higher contrast. So uh, this is their first landscape in my beginning class. They learn how to do that. I demonstrate it. So here's my demonstration. Most of these paintings take them a half hour to an hour. They do that and then a little bit later when they get better I let them move into color. So this is getting more difficult. Another thing they can do is something like this. Just practice going from light, light tones to medium to dark. 
and uh, using just black paint we don't get into color until we learn how to do this and then when portraits get more difficult if we go to this portrait here of Charles I painted him a number of times uh, this is too difficult to just try to draw that so I won't let my beginners just try to draw this is too hard they have to learn how to draw and we don't have time to teach them how to do that so we use a pattern like this you can see this pattern here they trace this pattern and then using just a one inch flat brush they uh, try to match dark for dark and get the lights light these are the values dark value light value and then eventually we move into more difficult subjects uh, this subject here is uh, in color and when we move into color they only get red yellow and blue no other colors and they uh, eventually I start trying to have them draw this maybe we grit it uh, and uh, we start getting into other techniques uh, but this isn't too difficult on a scale of 1 to 10 everything I've showed you is less than a 5 if 10 is maximum maximum difficulty uh, this is probably about a 5 and most of the black and whites I've showed you are one, two, three, four in difficulty. Now we go into the types of things I paint. Now this is a gal I painted before and if you look at this here this is about a number 10 in difficulty. If a beginner comes to me and says I want to paint this face the way it looks I'm saying you know there's one chance in a million. Uh, it's like playing Rachmaninoff if you're in the piano. This is extremely hard and to get into editing this because I don't want to paint her just the way she looks. There's compositional problems like this doesn't work. So this is very very difficult and you this would be cruel to have a beginner try to do this kind of a complex portrait. And the same thing here I painted I painted uh, I painted this before and if you look at the complexity here of the water look at that the, the complexity of the water in here people love to learn how to paint water that's extremely difficult so for a student to bring this photograph into class and say can I paint this I'd say that again is a very advanced you have to be a 20 year piano student to be able to handle that uh, so that's way too difficult and uh, this is the painting uh, you know this is the painting I did of that which this painting now right now is in uh, New York City and the American Watercolor Society show. So the lesson here is let's first learn how to paint something that's easy before we try to do something that's way too difficult.